What's good everyone? Back with another video. Got something a little different than what you're used to seeing. For the last couple of months I've been thinking about how Street Fighter 6 could be successful. And I'm not talking about over the course of 5 years, I mean right from the get go. So I'd like to express my opinions on what Capcom should do in order to avoid the terrible start Street Fighter 5 and MVCI had. I'm not sure what Capcom have been doing this past year because Street Fighter 5 hasn't received a significant update since December and to be honest, you can't even call one DLC character a significant update. So I'm hoping they're putting most of their resources into making sure Street Fighter 6 launches the same time as the PS5. I can't stress enough how important it is for SF6 to be a launch title, but before I go into more detail, I want to rewind for a second all the way back to the launch of the PlayStation 3. When the PS3 launched in America on November 2006, there was only a handful of games to choose from. Out of those couple of games was an FPS called Resistance Fall of Man. It was a pretty decent multiplayer shooter with a generic single player campaign, but it still managed to sell 4.4 million copies just because it launched with the PS3. Sony then thought they could milk the franchise and come out with two more sequels. Resistance 2 selling 2.5 million and the third and final Resistance on the PS3 coming in at only 1.5. Not bad numbers, but you could clearly see this franchise was in decline. But what Sony had failed to realise was that Resistance wasn't revolutionary in any way and the first game selling so well was only down to the fact of it being at the right place at the right time. And this is exactly what I want for SF6, they cannot pass up this opportunity. Neverrealm Studios was smart, Injustice launched on Xbox 360 and PS3 and did very well. They saw an opportunity and repackaged all the DLC into one game and called it the Ultimate Edition and had it ready for when the PS4 launched. And as a result, they managed to squeeze out an extra 1 million copies. I would say that's genius but to be honest, it's a no brainer. Now some of you may be thinking, hold up a second. I want to make sure the game is finished, polished and not missing any key features. I don't give a fuck about when it comes out, I just want it to be perfect. And that's all reasonable requests. But here's the thing, there's still a long way to go until the PS5 actually launches. Hypothetically, let's assume the PS5 is scheduled for release in the fall of 2020. I think that's a pretty realistic assumption. That would be absolutely perfect for Capcom as they could wrap up the final CPT season of SF5 and make preparations for CPT 2021 which would feature Street Fighter 6 and hopefully Marvel vs Capcom 4. So if the PS5 is launching around November or December of next year, that still gives Capcom another 16 to 17 months to make this game. That might not sound like a lot, but let's not forget, they've probably already been working on it for over a year. So what's that, a good 2.5 years of development? Sounds good to me. So why am I putting so much emphasis on the launch day release? Simple. When a casual gamer walks into a store or orders online, he won't have many titles to pick from. Consoles usually only have between 10 to 15 games to choose from and if you go back and check the sales figures of any of these games, you'll see that the majority of them all sold really well. Then you have to remember that a casual gamer doesn't buy a console with just one game. That gives Capcom a huge shot at people picking up Street Fighter 6, especially if it's the only fighting game available at launch. Comment below on roughly how many games you buy whenever you pick up a new console. So to sum up this point, it actually doesn't matter how bad Street Fighter 6 is. If it can launch alongside the PS5, it will almost certainly guarantee at least 2 million copies sold. Not shipped, sold. And that's me lowballing it. I'd say a more probable estimation is 3 million. And whilst I'm on the topic of casual gamers, this brings me to my next point. This game needs to be stacked to the roof with content. There needs to be several game modes including a fully fleshed out story mode where the characters do more than just awkwardly stand next to each other and talk a bunch of shit that no one is even remotely interested in. Capcom can take examples from MK11 and Tekken 7. Having more single player offline game modes, especially ones that reward players with exclusive skins would be a great way to keep players coming back. CFN is great, but how about an online training mode? How about some fun modes like fighting two characters at the same time, a time attack mode, or specific challenges such as only being able to use special attacks against the CPU on the hardest difficulty? I'm sure someone at Capcom 
can come up with interesting ways to keep us engaged in offline activities, especially when online becomes frustrating. In conclusion, there needs to be several bullet points on the back of the case because the average gamer doesn't care about reading three paragraphs about some law that they give zero fucks about. Let the buyer know that he's getting tremendous value for money in the easiest, most simplistic way and the sales will come. And my third and final point I want to mention is characters. Before I get into this, I just want to mention that there's a whole lot more I could talk about but this video would end up being over an hour long so I tried to keep it as short as possible. So as I was saying, characters. This game needs to launch with a shitload of characters to choose from. Tekken 7 launched with 36, Dragon Ball Fighters with 24, and MK11 with 25. Now compare that with Street Fighter V 16 and you can see how Capcom had already set themselves up for a difficult journey. SF6 should aim to launch with a minimum of 20 characters and they need to stop messing us around by locking insanely popular characters behind a paywall. Characters like Akuma, Ibuki and Guile should be in the game from day one and fans shouldn't have to wait a year or longer just to play their favourite Street Fighter characters which they've been playing for over 20 years. And that's pretty much all I have to say for now. As I mentioned earlier, there's a whole lot more they have to do to ensure Street Fighter 6 is more successful than 5, but I'll leave that for another day. I'd love to hear your feedback, so please let me know if you agree or disagree on the stuff I mentioned in this video. Don't forget to like my shit, and I'll catch you in the next one.